everyone from wherever you're calling from. I know we have people from all over. So I always hesitate to say just good morning. <laughs> Tammy. So we're gonna get started here in a few minutes. If you um, are not a writer of the current member, this is gonna be a little bit of a different meeting. We, every year we have a walk honors ceremony. And because we're online, now we incorporate it as part of our online program. Normally it was a, a all out big gala dinner and you know honoring everyone, but it's the one time every year that we honor different groups of people. And so for the first, Oh, probably 15 minutes of our program will be, you know, doing our honors program. So, um, and if they are, if our honorees are here, then they will, you know, we'll call, you know, show them if, if they're not, let's see, um, then, you know, they'll get their awards. Well, they're going to get their awards by mail, but they'll still get a shout out. Bill, Remind, it says, remind me, please, one of the memberships do, do's, do. Do's, oh. do. <laughs> I'd like July. you to say that out loud, Bill. July, um, Bill. Yeah, July 1st. And you'll have a couple of months to pay. And so there'll be, I'm sure there'll be incentives and there'll be reminders and there'll be lots of fun stuff that will be happening. So yeah, your, your dues are good until June 30th. So let's see, I, and I have a feeling we're going to get a lot more people logging on pretty much after our, um, our presentation. So anyway, because we had quite a few people that were, um, that are receiving awards. And I'm also waiting for some of our mm -hmm. presenters because they're not all on yet either. Um, Sandy, do you want to address a little bit membership while we're waiting? Um, well, since Bill asked the question, <laughs> um, the, the, thank you, sir. The dues period, um, the fiscal year for CWC starts July 1st, and you'll have through the end of July, August, the end of September to pay your dues for the upcoming year. Um, if you, if you don't by the end of September, our, um, member services directory will automatically um, drop you and then you'll be required to um, to re-up as we say um, just as if you were a brand new member so as long as you're as long as you have your dues um, postmarked by the sip by the 30th of September um, you're good Anybody else have other questions that um, San Sandy's our membership chair, Donna's our vice president, I'm president um, for just another month or so. And then while well, Sandy will is um, re, re, re upping, re upping, well, re volunteering for <laughs> uh, membership chair, but our, our board will be changing. So does anybody else have questions? I am, I'm texting a couple of people that are supposed to be here and they're not here yet. So um, either that or, let's see, just to quiet. Anybody have questions about anything? <laughs> no, okay. Sandy, can you do me a favor? Can you um, text Janet for me? Okay, and we're going to get started in about a minute for our um, for our honors program. We started Walk Honors. Oh man, I can't remember how many years ago, but I remember. Um, and you'll hear about the different categories. We're, we're giving out the Peggy Connolly Scholarship. If you happen to print out the the program, you'll see that um, we're giving out a Peggy Connolly Scholarship, and those will be explained as we go along. The Jack Lennon Award, Robert Hargraves, Dan McGuire Blog Challenge, um, Survivors, and there's a reason we call it the Survivors, and then Active Members. And Active Members, as Sandy will explain, are those who have um, so many points for writing 
And you don't have to be an active member to be a member of Writers of Kern, but um, it's just, and we do something special that other clubs don't do. And we just always thought it was a lot of fun to honor people that, you know, did something that is not easy to do and that's getting published. So anyway, what I think we should do then is, and I see Evan's here. Hi, Evan. <laughs> she's, on, she's on her way, Joan. Okay. So what we can do is we can get started because I want to be, I want to honor Evan's time too. And <laughs> Bill says, my life is full of questions. Few apply here. Well, you know, that's awesome, Bill. I think everyone should be full of questions <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I think we're going to get started with the walk honors. Um, when Janet shows up, then um, Donna just bypass that one and we'll, we'll keep going. So um, anyway, for this part of the program, I am thrilled to introduce our master, mistress, mistress of ceremonies, I think that's what you call it, uh, for this morning, Donna Harris. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, so right, like Joan talked about our walk honors, so Riders of Current is going to present walk honors this morning, and I'm excited because we have a lot of honorees. Um, we honor those who have gone above and beyond, as well as those who have published for the first time and those who have survived our blog challenge. Um, like Joan said, if you received your reminder emails, you have received a list of our winners today, but we wanted to publicly acknowledge them and give them a virtual round of applause. So each presenter will give a brief overview of what the award is about so that you'll know for future uh, walk honors and then they will present the winner or winners. So first we're going to start with our amazing Peggy Connolly scholarship. And our presenter today is Rebecca Langston George. So take it away, Rebecca. Good morning and welcome everybody. I'm really excited to be here um, in, uh, in memory and honor of Peg Connolly who was um, an early member of Writers of Kern and an active uh, children's writer. Uh, so there's a, um, this scholarship is in memory of Peg Connolly. She's one of the first people that I met when I came to Bakersfield who was writing for children. She used to host um, critique meetings for children's writers at her home. She also was very involved in the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators um, in which we work together in. So uh, this scholarship gives $500 to a, a children's writer and the person can use the money for any kind of um, use that would help them to achieve their writing goals. And this year uh, we are excited to present that Peg Connolly Award to um, I want to make sure she's here to send Bermudas. So round of applause. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Bermudas. And um, send your uh, certificate. I put it in the mail earlier this week. Would you like to tell us about your plans for the funds and maybe what you're working on currently in writing for children? Okay. Um, I um, purchased a um, iPad Pro. A refurbished but uh it's it's um really good condition and and a pen so that i can um illustrate um write and illustrate my own children children's book so i plan to actually redo the uh, illustrations for um the cloud maker <laughs> and um, i'm currently working on another uh, ya um verse um, book that's going to be coming out um, through West 44. So that's what I'm working on. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And thank you to Writers of Kern for, for providing that for children's writers. Um, yes, thank you. On behalf you. of children's writers in Kern County, we're, we're very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Sin. That is so amazing. And your plan sound absolutely amazing. Um, and I hope that those funds definitely help you in your pursuit of more books to come. Um, okay, so with that being said, we're going to move on to our next award. 
So the presenter of this award is Sandy Moffitt and it's our Jack London Award. And this is a very special award um, be, to be presented today. So Sandy, take it away. Good morning. Um, the Jack London Award is presented um, every other year and the award is presented to each branch chooses someone who has, in their opinion, gone above and beyond uh, in the, the work of the branch. And um, so I am going to um, quickly read the bio of the person who received the award and then what I shared with California Writers Club as to um, our award recipient. And that person is Joan Raymond. And Joan's bio states, Joan has been a member of Writers of Kern since 2012, serving on the board uh, from 2012 until present. One year as secretary, one as treasurer, and six as president and program chair. She's led critique groups since 2012 and was the senior editor for the 2019 and 2021 Walk Anthology. Joan earned her MA in Creative Writing English in 2017, Along with writing, she is a freelance editor and creative writing instructor. And then this is what I shared with um, CWC. And Joan will be uh, either virtually or physically presented with the award um, later this year. Um, Joan Raymond has what I call a servant's heart. Since she joined writers, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Since she joined Writers of Current back in 2012, she has held almost every position on our board. Beyond that, she is willing to help with any and all tasks. Why? Because she not only loves writing and helping writers, but she loves Writers of Kern. Joan has been an example of strength in adversity and an encourager to the highest degree. We have been honored to have Joan on our board and look forward to many more years of having her as our friend and mentor. Congratulations, Joan. Thank you, Sandy. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding it together just... because of the meeting, but I'll let I'll let loose afterwards. <clears throat> Thank you, Anna's. Thank you, Debbie. Did you want to say anything, Joan? Just thank you. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, Writers of Kern has been part of who I am for so long, and um, I'm just honored that everyone has trusted me for so long just to be a part of the board and you know making things happen so thank you we're so proud of you and uh, especially it's one of the reasons why you received the award because you are absolutely amazing um as anna said you've taken our club a long long way and you've made it absolutely spe spectacular um especially during the pandemic and keeping us together because I know some clubs weren't able to keep themselves together and you've kept us together and helped us to um, make it extraordinary. So thank you. I have you. to say, I've had amazing boards with me and I haven't done it all myself. They've, you know, this has been a group effort. So, you know, without the amazing boards and people that have served on them, you know, we've done it together. So, but thank you. Okay. So, Thank you again, Joan, and everybody, let's give her a round of applause, a virtual round of applause. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next award. Um, it is the Robert Hargraves Award and it's presented by Janice Kubinski. Um, so take it away, Janet. Good morning. Well, Robert Hargraves, this is the award. I don't know if you can see it, okay? But um, once a year, we're, we give an award, the Robert Hargraves Award, to uh, anyone who has had, had been published that year um, traditionally, which means, you know, you, you go to a company, they accept your manuscript, they... Uh, I guess do whatever changes and then they, they um, go ahead and publish your work. Uh, in the past, we've had a, a sterling uh, recipient who has received it one, two, three, 
four, I know at least five, and that is Rebecca Langston George. So congratulations, Rebecca. Um, I believe that uh, Cynthia Bermudez is uh, due for the award too. And um, Robert was one of our, our members uh, who looked like a man on the street. He had uh, kind of messy gray hair and a long scraggly uh, gray beard. Um, looked like he was, and I, I loved Robert. He looked like he was in a daze most of the time but he didn't miss a thing. Um, he, he really was a wonderful writer. He had a very interesting background. He was a veterinarian during the Vietnam War in Vietnam. He specialized in uh, chickens and um, those type of fowl and was in Vietnam to help the farmers um, with the any problems that they were having with their chickens. The man nearly uh, died from uh, Viet Cong and uh, his story is really amazing. It's It was called Dr. Bob the, the Chicken Doctor. And um, it it's a, a really war a heartwarming book. But this man, uh, worked hard and achieved, and um, those who received this were this award uh, have done the same thing. I believe Cynthia Bermudez is uh, receiving it this year, and Rebecca. I'm not sure. No, okay. I wasn't sure if you had uh, submitted anything or not. So. Congratulations to Cynthia. And um, what will happen is your name will, will your name, your, yeah, your name and the book will be engraved on this plaque. Uh, it's shown at all of our in-person meetings uh, every month. And then you will also receive your own plaque. So- and Excuse me, Janet, Jen, um, you, Award, you were awarded for two books, right? You had two books published this past year, correct? Did I mute you? Hold on. Okay, I'm unmuting you. Yes, it's two. Okay. So make sure Janet has that information with both books that were, tradi okay. that were traditionally published. Right, so, right. Okay. okay. Congratulations. Well, great. Thank I you. hope to see uh, some new, new names up here next year. So <laughs> congratulations. Sim. Congratulations, Sin. Amazing. So you're able, you're going to be able to take that Peggy Connolly scholarship and traditionally publish some more. We can't wait. Um, <laughs> and um, so that's absolutely amazing. And we just want to give you another round of applause, another round of a virtual applause, everybody. And uh, congratulations. So we're going to move on to our something that I've done before and a lot of people have done before, but it's very, very challenging. This is why we call them survivors. So we're going to move on to our Dan McGuire blog challenge survivors. And um, our presenter today is Shrey Coy, and she's going to present. So let's hear from Shrey. Good morning, everybody. Um, so Dan McGuire, he was a longtime blog member, um, an avid blogger with over 700 blog posts. Amazing. Um, he passed away a few years ago and to honor him, Walk decided to start this Dan McGuire blog challenge. And every year, those who are brave enough to accept this challenge and survive are awarded a certificate that showed that they survived it. Um, we have four survivors this year in the... Uh, I actually did it a few years ago and I did not survive. So this is, this is amazing of them. So our uh, survivors are Natalia Corres, Manav Gulia, Shelby Stoner, and Bargavi Gulia. Um, congratulations to you guys. We're so proud of you. Um, you guys did amazing work on your blog posts and thank you for sharing your words with us. So, 
good job on everybody. And those who didn't survive, I do have something for you too. So thank you for participating. <laughs> thank you. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Shrey. Um, cause I've done, I've done the blog challenge before I've survived once and then I did it again. And I definitely did not survive that second time. And I knew this time around, I probably wasn't going to survive. So it is amazing to see these four amazing people. And I, I, um, want to ask you, Shrey is a couple of these, uh, high schoolers. Sorry, I'm uh, Yes, two of them are high schoolers, Manav and Bargavi. They are actually siblings. Um, they joined because their teacher told them about our blog challenge and they decided to participate and they did amazing. So I'm really proud of them. Awesome. That is awesome. That's awesome that we had high schools who survived. <laughs> so they have their schoolwork and then they survived by completing their blog. So yeah, explain, Shrey, real quick, explain what you have to do to survive the blog challenge. Okay, so you have to write 26 blog posts um, over the course of 13 weeks. So that's two blog posts a week. And that was went from February 8th or 9th all the way to May 9th. So that was a huge commitment, a lot of work. <laughs> and you also, oh, also, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, and you also uh, need to comment on each other's blog posts and participate in that way so you can give each other support and encouragement along the way as well. So you're not alone. That is absolutely amazing. Um, and I just wanna point out, so we have Shelby Stoner who actually survived. And then we have Natalia who is our webmaster and our newsletter editor. So, and she survived being able to do that and do her blog and her blogs are absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to say congratulations to everybody because it's absolutely amazing. Okay. So we're going to move on. Uh, last but definitely not least, we have our last award, which is our active member pinning. Um, and our presenter will be Sandy Moffitt, and she's going to give us a brief overview of what that um, active member pinning is. And uh, take it away, Sandy. Good morning again. Um, so anytime someone joins Writers of Kern, they are given one of two statuses, either associate or active. Uh, an associate member is anyone who uh, has not yet received enough publishing credits to have that active status. And we do have um, a points calculator that we use uh, to determine whether or not you've received enough points to get that active status. And um, we award that twice a year uh, in May and in December. And this time, I think this is the most people who have moved from associate to active, at least in my memory of all of the years that I've been with Writers of Kern. And I've been here a long time. Um, anyway, so we have the following people and um, they will be receiving Let's see how close I can get that. This active pin. And since we can't do it in person right now, um, I will be putting these in the mail unless you're brave and you want me to bring it to you and I will. Um, so we have the following people who have received their active status. Tammy Ballou, Bill Ballou, Dan Bronson, Ann Cook, Sandra Gould Ford, Gay Harlander, Lois Henry, Jeanette Herring, Diane Lobra, Andrew Roth, Dr. Joanne Schmidt, and under the wire, um, Mary Slagle. We received her membership application and her dues and her points calculation all in the mail the other day. So all of those people will be receiving an active pin and we congratulate you for all of your hard work and we thank you for being part of our membership of Writers of Kern. And we encourage any of the rest of you who have not yet received that active status um, to work at that. It's not, it's not difficult. There's a lot of different ways that you can receive points for that. Um, and so we just recommend that if you have questions about that, you send me an email or give me a call on the phone and uh, find out how to get that 
uh, I'll email you the points calculator and um, we would love to have that uh, be able to give you your active pin and congratulate you on your hard work. So thank you to Writers of Kern. Yay, that is absolutely amazing. Yes, like Sandy said, we are very proud of you um, because that means that you have been putting in that hard work to get that active status. You have been publishing and all that, and that is absolutely amazing. So we want to give you another round of applause because you're absolutely amazing. Okay, so that, that is the end of our walk honors. So let's give everyone who was acknowledged today a round of applause. And if you can, uh, give them some encouragement in the chat or give them uh, some acknowledgement in the chat. Let them know how amazing they are. And uh, I'm going to right now turn it over to our president, Joan, for some announcements about our upcoming um, events that are online. Thank you, Donna, and thank you for to all the presenters and congratulations to all the winners. Um, for active, just to let you know, it's blog challenge is points. Um, Self-publishing is points. So you don't have to be just traditionally published or published in a newspaper or something like that. So there's a lot of amazing ways to get those points and um, just get a hold of Sandy. She'll send you out the information and you'll find it's not as difficult as you think. So upcoming. Um, and I'm going on the meeting agenda that was sent out in the Eventbrite um, email. Um, so in June, we have Open Mic Monday. That's for members only. June 19th, we have our board elections. All the members are encouraged to be there to vote for our new board. Our, um, our speaker is Brendan Constantine, The Art of Getting It Wrong. Um, July 5th will be another Open Mic Monday. July 8th is the book club. And then July 17th, we have Nancy Ellen Dodd returning and everybody loves Nancy, she's amazing. And these are all online, they're all free. Um, so, you know, we're gonna continue to have online for a while until we've been given the go ahead. Um, yes, Anna says, open mic Monday, come and join us. So that, that is a members only and Anna's will be sending out an email reminder for that. Um, Nancy, she has so many different ideas for program. She hasn't been able to narrow it down, but we should have that information very soon. So um, Evan, you're on a couple minutes late, but hopefully that's okay. Anyway, today I am, um, I, this is amazing. So we have the person, normally we have somebody talking about something and they're like, but somebody else made it. So they don't have all the answers. Um, <clears throat> if you remember, Bill Blue spoke in January, I believe, and he spoke about um, increasing your mailing list. And Bill was amazing. Bill talked all about how he built his mailing list and how he used this, this app, this program that was foreign to many people called Story Origin. Well, Bill only could explain so much. So I got a hold of Evan, who actually invented the app. He's the guy that just, you know, probably works in some dark dungeon somewhere. And, you know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe just in your kitchen, right, Evan? I don't know. But um, anyway, so Evan, he'll explain why he did this and all about it. So welcome, Evan Gao. Oh, I thought I unmuted you. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, no worries. No worries. Uh, yes. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Uh, uh, and <clears throat> like you, like you mentioned early, earlier, I know Bill sort of went through his own presentation, presentation of how he built his mailing list and part of that covered story origin. I'll be covering some of the same stuff. So maybe we can speed through some parts of it um uh but uh and then maybe we can spend some more time in getting into the nitty-gritty of other parts of story origin as well um so uh let me go joan how how uh, loud is my dog in the background oh we can hear you... the dog but you know it's Nowadays with Zoom, if you don't have a dog or a kid crying or somebody running back and forth, it's it's not Zoom. So okay, great. You no, know, don't worry about it. Just right. you know, it just makes you a real person. You know. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um. Uh. So. 
uh, yeah, with that, why don't I go ahead and I will jump into this. Um, a quick show of hands, though, I guess. How many people here have used Story Origin? Okay. All right. Great. So, so we'll be covering probably a lot of new stuff. Fantastic. Um, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. Uh, let's see. Joan, you see that all right? Yes. All right, great. And uh, anyone feel free to uh, throw any questions in the chat. And I think, Joan, you may be uh, able Donna to- and are, Donna and I are gonna be monitoring the chat. And all so right. Donna, Evan has said, if there's questions come in to go ahead and gently interrupt him. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> feel free to interrupt me. Um, I think it's, I like to try to answer questions in the context in which they were asked. So, um, so let's go ahead and do that. So, so yeah. So, uh, as mentioned, I'm the indie developer behind Story Origin, which is a marketing tool for authors to help you uh, build your mailing list, increase your sales, find reviewers, and stay on top of your deadlines. That's a lot of different things. You can kind of think about it as just a one-stop shop for all of the sort of marketing tool and author management tools you might need. Um, so let's jump into it. If you kind of look at the marketing landscape uh, right now for authors, you see across platforms like Facebook or Amazon, uh, those platforms are based on uh, bidding. So if you want to get placed in the search results or in someone's feed, you typically have to uh, place a bid in order to get into that uh, into those results uh, and be viewed by people. And as more authors uh, start to do this, the, cr the prices for those bids continues to increase, right? Um, so it makes it very difficult for authors who are just starting out. The other thing is that social media so uh, has become play to play, pay to play. So it used to be that if you had a bunch of followers on your Facebook page, uh, when you posted to your Facebook page, 100% of your followers would see that pop up in their timeline. Nowadays, it's, you know, you're lucky if you're getting one to 3% of your followers actually seeing any posts that you make on your Facebook page. Uh, the way that you have to do it now is you basically have to pay to boost those posts to the people that are are already following you. Uh, so you're having to pay to reach your own audience, essentially. Um, and then the, the other thing is just that, you know, uh, review rates across, uh, you know, platforms are relatively low. So it might take you 100 uh, sales to get just a single book review. And so it can be really difficult to increase the conversion rate on your sales pages across retailers because, you know, fewer, fewer people are less willing to put themselves out on a limb and, uh, buy a book that has zero reviews when they could find another book in the same genre, which has maybe, you know, 20, 30, 50 reviews. Um, so, so it's hard to get started as well uh, from that perspective. So the solution that I recommend is this really old thing called email, which everyone I'm sure has heard of by now. It's only been around for a couple of decades. Um, so, uh, Email is great because uh, it, it, before we dive into things, I, I just want to mention a few things. So, so we have quotes here from a couple of authors. Uh, Danny says, my email list allowed me to generate reviews and launch the book to number one, a new releases in Gaslight Fantasy for the first week of release. Caleb says, my mailing list is a major component to marketing of my book. Without it, I would be dead in the water. Um, so mailing lists are really important. They help authors get more reviews, increase their sales. Uh, but you might think, okay, how long is it going to take before I can actually start doing any of this stuff? Uh, and uh, the stuff that we're going to be talking about, you should be able to start applying today, even if you haven't actually officially published any books yet, right? Um, so, so you might not have any books for sale, and I think you can still get started with a lot of these tactics today. So mailing lists 101. Um, the first question you know you might run across is how do I build a mailing list? How do I how do I actually send emails? So there are a lot of services out there. 
um, Merrill Light MailChimp Act Campaign Convert Kit, SendFox. There's there's uh, like dozens of them. Uh, I recommend Mailer Light just because it's easy to get started um, with them, and you can have up to a thousand subscribers for free. Uh, and so it's it's just an easy place to get started. The reason that you want to use an email service provider, one of these services, rather than just sending out an email to a list of you know, a hundred people or something that you just send through Gmail or Yahoo or what have you um, is one. So if you're sending out emails like that, you need to comply with certain data regulations around GDPR and can spam. Um, and that's not really possible with like, if you're just sending an email out through your normal email client, like Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo. Um, the other thing is a lot of those, uh, those clients have limits on how many emails you can send in a single day. So normally you can't send more than 500 e emails in a single day with something like Gmail. Uh, so these email service providers allow you to send, you know, thousands of emails in a single day. Uh, they help you avoid being categorized as spam. And they also have a lot of um, uh, stuff that helps you out on the data side, being able to track opens and clicks and unsubscribes all that good stuff for so definitely you'll need one of these to get started when you're you're starting to build your mailing list uh why would someone want to sign up to your mailing list though and actually receive emails from you um so uh what i what i say there is you want to give them something of value in in give them something of value when they get onto your mailing list, right? So a lot of times if you just say, hey, join my mailing list, people are going to say, why would I do that? I don't want to just like open myself up to just getting random emails from you. But if you're giving them something of value for getting on, going on your list, then it makes that uh, trade off a little bit more clear. So I recommend giving them a free story since we're writers here. Um, and we typically call this a reader magnet. So it's the thing, it's the thing that you give away for free when they sign up to your mailing list. Uh, what should you use as a reader magnet? I recommend a 10 to 20,000 word short story prequel to your book or series. So that's really specific and a very dense statement. So we're going to unpack that in a second. Um, so let's go through that now. So why a prequel? So if you're using a prequel as a reader magnet, it can effectively hook your readers into wanting to read up a reading a follow up story. Um, it can provide an effective introduction into your universe and it entices readers who both have and haven't read uh, book one in your series. So uh, like other things you might try or you might do, you might use like a side story as your reader magnet, but a side story might not as effectively introduce uh, the reader into your universe or to the characters. It might not as effectively hook them into reading the follow-up book either, right? Because with a prequel, you're sort of leading into book one. Um, and so uh, in that prequel, can be a hook even for people who have read book one and then they want to go and they want to dive a little bit deeper into the characters backstories so so even people who you know maybe bought um maybe bought your book and then they saw at the end of the book they said oh and by the way you can go and get my free prequel here if you sign up my mailing list it provides it a good um incentive to them to join your mailing list even if they're already familiar with the characters um, so why 10 to 20,000 words? So first you don't want to make it too long where you decrease your read through rate. Uh, that's the read through rate is the number of people who read book, uh, read that short story and then go on to actually buy book one. Uh, you don't want it to be too short either though, because if you only give someone like a 200 word short story for signing up to your mailing list, they're going to feel like they were getting shortchanged because they thought, oh, I'm going to get like this great story from this author. I'm going to be able to like test them out, see if I like them. 200 words is not going to be enough for them to be able to tell whether or not they're going to enjoy your work as an author or not. You can think of this as sort of your free trial, right? Uh, they get this sample of yours so that they can see whether or not they want to invest in buying more of your works. Um, and then 
Uh, so why is why ten to twenty thousand words as a good range? Uh, it's just it's it's fairly fast to write because it's kind of short, um, but not too short, and that makes it uh, it quick to write and cheap to edit, right? So uh, those are my recommendations on for what you use at a, as a reader magnet. You're, you're not stuck with writing a prequel short story though, right? Um, a lot of authors will use just like the first three chapters of the book that they already wrote as their reader magnet. Um, you may find that the conversion rate of people who come to your landing page and see that they're only going to get the th first three chapters of a full book though is going to be lower than if they know that they're getting at least a full story by getting a prequel. Um, so if you have to, if you, if you're like crunched for time and you just have to choose, I would say get started earlier rather than later and go ahead and just make a, make a reader magnet out of the first three chapters of your book. But once you have a few weeks um, just to spend uh, writing a reader magnet, I would I would go ahead and do that uh, because you can you can increase your conversion rate on the number of signups you're going to get to your mailing list that way. Um, so how does this actually work? How do I how do I get people onto my mailing list? So the first thing you're going to need is a landing page where people can actually request the book, and then you also need to have a way for them to download the book once they've requested it. So over here. Um, these are examples from how it would look on story origin. You could build these landing pages on your own website. Um, and you could provide your file downloads through Dropbox or something else like that. Um, you certainly don't have to use story origin to do the things that we're ta talking about today. Story origin just makes all this a lot simpler, uh, and faster to do. Um, so. Uh, yeah, some an author a reader would simply click get the story here, and then they'd put in their name and email address, uh, and then that would take them over to the file download page on Story Origin, and then Story Origin provides a bunch of different download methods for them, so they can get the book via email or a short download link, so they can get the book right on their reading device, whether that's a Kindle or a Kobo or what have you. Um, so, so yeah, so Story Origin also handles that sort of reader customer support for you. So you're not dealing with people uh, asking you all the time, how do I get this on my reading device? Uh, where do those, uh, Joan, are we getting any questions so far? No, nothing yet. We're good? Okay, I did have great. a one, I did want, I yeah. think I thought of something to ask you yeah. and I'm not sure. I mean, this is really, this is just more of a brainstorming thing, but I know people that write children's books and so mm. they really don't have a prequel, but I've right. seen uh, reader magnets that are in the form of like, um, I mean, there's a suggestion of um, like coloring pages or like if mm -hmm. they have, it's about insects, they'll have a whole book on insects and puzzles and things like that. So, you know, and I have one that's maps, maps of my town for my right. colleagues. So there's a lot of different ways that people can make a reader magnet if yep. you're just like oh my gosh I can't even think about writing 20,000 words right now but yeah and and so Evan's um app will do all this you can you can download those kind of things with his app anyway sorry but no that's a definitely great thing that you point out there a reader magnet does not have to be a prequel short story it's what I recommend but uh that's not really that's not conducive within every genre, right? If you're a nonfiction author, for example, <laughs> a lot of times a prequel isn't going to make sense for a nonfiction book, right? Um, so you might provide like worksheets or something along those lines instead as well. Um, but yeah, the other suggestions you make are great as well. Yeah, you, you're, not, you're not necessarily constrained to this idea of it needs to be a prequel short story, right? Um, there are lots of ways that you can sort of think outside the box with what you might give to readers when they sign up to join your mailing list. Um, awesome. So uh, going to uh, where, where readers will actually find the link to your landing page. So one is, we sort of already mentioned this earlier, is you could link to that landing page at the back of your book, that uh, book one that you're selling as a as a, hey, sign up to my mailing list and you're going to get the prequel or you're going to get the worksheets or you're going to get what have you. 
Um, second place would be your author website or via blog posts. So in those, uh, in the blog post, uh, in the blog challenge you guys are running, you can, you can uh, link to uh, your landing page there. Uh, you might also uh, run ads to that landing page uh, to get people to sign up. And then the last one is uh, via email cross promotions, which we're going to dive into a little bit deeper because they're quite popular for a number of reasons. Uh, the, the three here are number one, uh, email cross promotions that you do with other authors are free, easy, and they're targeted by genre. So a uh, email cross promotion is simply uh, when I go and I join forces with another author and I say, hey, let's promote our books together. So that is free. There's no cost to me and you saying, hey, let's, let's both promote each other's books. Um, it's easy. You don't need to learn some like ad targeting dashboard and learn how to use all these different tags and metrics and cost per click and all this stuff, right? Um, all it is is an agreement between authors like, hey, let's promote each other's books. Um, and then it's targeted by genre. So you don't need to, uh, you know, you can find other authors that are sci-fi authors and I'm going to go and I'm gonna cross promote with these other sci-fi authors or I'm going to go promote cross promote with these other uh, fantasy authors or romance or middle grade or what, you know, nonfiction, what have you, uh, you can, you can make that targeted to the correct audience. Kevin, a question. Yeah. Uh, let's say I have 25 people on my mailing list. I mean, I am just getting started. Yeah. And somebody else um, on story origin writes the same genre, but they've got a thousand people. Are they still going to accept me? Are they, are they going to like feel like they're getting a raw deal? I mean, do I need to get, you know, that's the fear. The fear mm -hmm. is, is my mailing list is puny. What mm -hmm. can I offer that other person? So, yeah. So, so cross promotions come in two forms and we're going to jump into that. Um, they come as either newsletter swaps where it's a direct one-to-one -one cross promotion where I've got a mailing list of a thousand people. You've got a mailing list of a thousand people and I'm agreeing to mention your book in my newsletter and you're agreeing to mention my book in your newsletter. Uh, so that's a direct one-to-one -one cross promotion. And, and there where you have a big difference between your two mailing lists, you might say, oh, okay, like this, this is probably not going to work out. Um, but when you're doing a group, prom group promotion uh, where you've got, you know, 20 other authors that are all list their books on a single landing page together. And we're all promoting that landing page. It matters a little bit less how many subscribers each particular author in that group promotion has. And we're going to, we're going to jump into the, the specifics of how those work. So basically um, you're saying is that anybody with any size mailing list, you can help them. Yeah. So, so you can definitely get started even if you have zero subscribers um, on Story Origin. So, so, or I mean, zero subscribers to your mailing list. Uh, you can you can certainly apply to cross promotions on Story Origin. And the other thing is, is there's no cost to you or to the other author to simply make a request, right? Um, when you make a request for cross promotion on Story Origin, uh, if they if they don't if they don't want to accept that cross promotion for any reason, it's it's uh, it's very simple. They can just they can decline that cross promotion. Um, so there's not really that much of a cost there, right? Uh, so you and a lot of authors that have really large mailing lists, you would be surprised. A lot of them will oftentimes accept uh, requests from authors with very tiny mailing lists, uh, just because. They were probably in your position maybe not more than two or three months ago. So you might see, oh, they've got a mailing list of a thousand subscribers. They must have been at this for a super long time. It may be that they were just in your shoes like literally three months ago. And they're like, I know exactly the position this person is. <laughs> and I'm happy to help them start growing their mailing list as well. Um, so yeah, and you can definitely get started even with a very small mailing list. Um, anything else? 
No. And I've seen right. that on your side. I've seen people that have been more than generous, but I just wanted you to explain. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Um, so, so there are two types of uh, cross promotions, which we talked about. So one is a newsletter swap where you're directly mentioning the other author's book in your mailing list. So uh, that would typically show up in your email, in your newsletter as a, you would put the author's book cover in your mailing list. And then you would link that uh, image to the landing page where uh, the reader can get that book. The other version is a group promotion, and that's you and a bunch of other authors are all agreeing to promote a single landing page where it shows all of your books. So quickly, here's a newsletter swap. A reader would click on the book cover. It would take them to the landing page where they can get that book. A group promotion, they would click on the banner image for the group promotion in your uh, email. And then that would take them to a landing page where it lists all of the author's books in that group promotion. So you might have, you know, 20 different books landed there, uh, 20 uh, different books uh, uh, showing up there, and you are all promoting that single landing page. And then readers can go and they can click on any individual book in that group promotion to actually get it. Uh, so some common questions I get about or reader magnets is one is can I use a book in KU as a reader magnet and the answer is you can give up to 10% according to Amazon's uh, KDP knowledge base so 10% uh, is roughly the amount that they will show as a preview to anyone that is looking to buy the book on Amazon so you can you know you go to your book on Amazon and you click preview like generally readers can see up to 10% of a book there. And so Amazon is like, you know, if you can always already read that for free on Amazon, like we don't really care if you give that away to readers as well. Um, Evan, can you explain, Bill's asking what is KU? Uh, yeah, so KU is Kindle Unlimited. So um, Kindle Unlimited is a program on Amazon, which if you put your book into Kindle Unlimited, readers can read your book for free as a part of a subscription and you'll get paid out based on the number of pages that uh, readers read of your book each month. Um, but being a part of Kindle Unlimited means that you agree to exclusively distri distri uh, distribute your ebook through Amazon. So if your book is in Kindle Unlimited, you can't give your ebook version out through any other retailers or any other websites. Um, so that is what Kindle Unlimited is. So it's, yeah, it's a, uh, the reason people ask this question is, you know, like, what if I want to use this book, which I've agreed to exclusively distribute through Amazon, can I use that on Story Origin? So, so no, you can't, except for you can give up to 10% of it away through through story origin um the other thing we already sort of briefly uh mentioned this is you know can i join cross promotions if i have zero subscribers absolutely you can um there's lots of other authors who were just in your shoes uh, like within the past couple of months and have probably grown their list by hundreds um very recently um, and so, yeah, you shouldn't be surprised uh, if, if a lot of those authors will accept you into cross promotions just because they know exactly uh, uh, where you were uh, from just a few months ago. So uh, what do I do when someone signs up to my mailing list? Uh, and the thing I would recommend there is sending them a welcome email. So um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, like a welcome email and a welcome sequence. So there are three main goals of a welcome sequence. Those are ensuring that they got the download for, for your reader magnet, for your, your short story or whatever you're giving away for free. Um, the second one is to remove freebie seekers, people who are just signing up to your mailing list um, to get your free book, but are then never going to open or read any of your emails. Um, and then three is to sort of find your champions, the people who are going to go above and beyond and help you build up as an author. So the first email in your, or I guess sort of before we get into what emails you write them, 
I do like to talk about the framing. So uh, the way that I like to write emails to my own newsletter, which I have for Story Origin, is I like to frame frame them uh, sort of like you're you're bringing a friend to a party. So you introduce them to people at the party. You ask them questions to engage them in a conversation, and then you also share uh, personal stories with them, right? Like you don't you don't bring a friend to a party and then like ditch them and go hang out with the with other people, right? You want to make sure that if you're bringing someone to a party and they don't know a lot of people there, that they sort of get in with your get in with your crowd and and get to get to mingle and you help them get to know other people there. Um, so making this actionable. Uh, for your newsletter. First, I would recommend writing your newsletter as if you're addressing an individual, not a group. So when you write your newsletter, don't say, hey, everyone, or um, if you're from Texas, like me, howdy, y'all. Uh, you you want to make sure you're, you're addressing them as an individual because they're getting this email like you're, you're just another individual writing to them. Um, the second thing is you can share uh, personal stories or pictures with them. Um, so, you know, in my welcome sequence, I have a picture of me, uh, sitting there hanging out with my dog Cosmo. Um, and that's a great way to sort of introduce who I am. Um, and the third way is you can create a form for readers to meet each other. So, uh, that might be like a Facebook group or something else. Uh, if you're, uh, I would recommend a Facebook group just because it's the easiest way to get started. Um, and it doesn't require that much uh, technical experience to set one up. So yeah, that's another way to sort of bring people into getting to be a part of your group and not just like just you and that other person interacting. That's sort of the introducing them to your friends aspect to bringing them to the party. And that, um, just so people understand, that is set up on your mailer light or your MailChimp. That right? I mean, that's what you're talking about. The welcome email comes from your email client, not your, not story origin. Correct. That's right. So, yeah. yep. So when you're, so story origin is not an email service provider. Uh, e those email service providers are like the ones that I mentioned earlier, MailerLite or ConvertKit or Aweber, what have you. Those are, those are where you actually design and you send your emails. Story Origin is just a tool that can help you collect interest uh, from readers in joining your mailing list. And Story Origin handles like the providing you with a landing page and helping you with a, getting that file download to the reader. Um, and then Story Origin can help you find and arrange those cross promotions with other authors. But when it comes to designing and sending any sort of email, that would be something that you're doing on your email service provider. Um, so this welcome sequence is something that you would set up on MailerLite or what have you. Um, so the let's go through um, the typical welcome sequence that I would sort of recommend. So email one, this gets triggered when the reader has subscribed to your mailing list. So when they get added to your mailing list, you can have a, a sequence set up there that says, okay, when this person joins my, my mailing list, then I want to send them this email. And the email that you can design there, you know, I would typically provide some subject like download your free copy of, insert the title of your reader magnet here. Um, the content there, you know, is like, thank you for joining my mailing list. Um, you might have an alternative methods for them to download the book there. So Story Origin will redirect them to a page where they can download the book directly from Story Origin. Um, but I also like to include another download link. So Story Origin, you can provide, you can, you can create landing pages as well, which are called direct downloads. And those direct download pages are basically just a way for people to download download a file. Um, so you don't need to set one up if they join, if they got your reader magnet through Story Origin. But I do like to provide that link there and create one and put that in that welcome sequence because you'll find a lot of people who will download a book and then they might forget. And then uh, just providing that uh, download link again for them just provides them a reminder to say, oh yeah, I actually already did download that book. Uh, like I wanted to read that this weekend or something. And so that welcome sequence email can help sort of remind them of that. Um, the other thing is to uh, 
I would recommend is putting like a personal picture or a story or a story from your Facebook group or form there. And then your call to action might be to join the Facebook group or forum that you've set up as a sort of like, hey, come join the party. Um, the second thing is, uh, so, so email number two in your welcome sequence, you can trigger this um, either one to three days after the reader has subscribed. Um, the subject might be something like my first love or how I uh, joined the underworld or, you know, genre is the greatest and here's why. Uh, and so the content I recommend in this email is a personal story related to your genre and then a link to your direct download page again. Um, that that personal story there is the, these personal stories that I keep talking about sharing. These are ways to build a rapport with your audience so that they get to know a little bit more about who you are and they feel like they know you as an author a little bit more deeply than just, hey, this person is trying to sell me more books, right? Like you want to actually establish a relationship with your audience. Uh, and this is something that email provides you that you cannot get through just you know, placing bids for ads on Facebook or Amazon or something like this. This is, you know, email actually will help you build more uh, super fans rather than just people who are looking for next book, right? So you can start to build a base of people who are, who you, who you can uh, steadily rely on buying, you know, book two, book three, book four, what have you. Um, and so that call to action for them to join uh, your Facebook group or your forum if you get them to sort of join your 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 tribe uh, that you start building, that also provides a hook for them to keep coming back to you. Because if they make this Facebook group or form like a part of their sort of um, regular activities, then it then you're always sort of at the top of mind when it comes about when it comes to thinking about okay, what do I want to read next? Uh, Going to, to email number three, this is where uh, I would say now what you want to do is you want to find your champions. So this is typically you're going to have this email triggered somewhere between two to seven days after the reader is subscribed. Um, you might have uh, the subject be something like get the follow up to my reader magnet for free, um, where, you know, reader magnet is the title of your book. Uh, the content there might be a link to a direct download page for the reader magnet, um, but also what you want your call to action to be. This is the important part. So you want it to be a link to your review copy request page for the follow-up to your reader magnet. So um, one of the things that you might do with your mailing list, and you don't have to do this, but it's something that I recommend, is you're going to have a lot of people who are going to subscribe to get on your mailing list and they're, they're going to read that prequel or they're going to read that reader magnet. Um, and one way that you can, you can get value out of a lot of those people is by having them review your books. And so you might say, Hey, you know, if you loved uh, this sort of trial version of my book, uh, and you want to get the next book for free, even still, uh, you can get a review copy from me and I'll give you that book sort of with the expectation that you're going to leave a review for it. Um, and this is, so these are your champions. These are the people that are going to, going to sort of help build you up and they're going uh, as an author uh, when, when you're still, when you still don't have necessarily a lot of champions yet. Um, managing, there are sort of two parts to managing a review team when you start to build one. So the first is um, vetting people who are requesting your review copies. Um, and then two is tracking and following up with them once you've actually approved them for a review copy. So vetting them, uh, things that you might look for are their reviewer profile links um, in recent reviews that they've posted. So when someone requests a review copy from you, you can go to their Amazon reviewer profile and you can see, okay, have they reviewed a lot of books um, in the past um, and have they done any of those within the past three months or all their reviews from like two or three years ago. Uh, the second thing that you want to look for is the reviews that they have written. Are they actually for books in my romance? So are they actually uh, books in your genre? Like, so if you write uh, steamy romance and you see that this person has only ever reviewed cozy romances, then 
uh, if they request a review copy from you, they might be thinking that they're going to be getting a cozy romance, but you actually write steamy romance. And so you know it's not going to be something that they're going to enjoy. So you might want to decline their request for a review copy because they're, they're thinking they're going to get something that they're not. And then that might lead to a bad review. So you want to you wanna make sure that the people that are actually you approve to give them a, a, a full copy of the book, you want to make sure that they actually read your genre. Uh, and then lastly, you want to see like that they actually have a history of completed reviews. Um, so this is something that's a little bit harder to do if you're managing yourself, but we're going to talk about how Story Origin can help you with this process. Um, and then tracking and following up. Uh, you want to send an email when the book is published. So if your review copy is for, if you're, if you're giving out review copies for pre-publication books, so books that have not been published yet, you're giving them an advance of like, let's say two to six weeks before the book is actually published so that on day one, you can start to have some reviews posted up there. Um, then uh, you need to follow up with them on publication day. So to make sure that they go and leave the, those reviews. And then You'll want to follow up again two weeks after they've received the review copy if they haven't completed the review copy process yet. So uh, if you gave it to them six weeks before it was ready to publish and then publishing day comes and they don't leave a review for two weeks, uh, then you would want to follow up with them then and say, hey, like, are you going to are you going to leave a review for the book or just like want to remind you like, hey, you got this free copy. Um, just wanted to make sure like you were still uh, uh, still working on it. Uh, and then uh, you want to follow up when they complete their review. So when they finish that process and they've they've uh, they've written their reviews, like it's nice to send them a follow up and just say, hey, thanks for leaving a review. Um, and you might want to ask them if they want to join your review team to get other free review copies from you. And then a question came in. Yeah. How do we find the reviewer profile? Sometimes on Amazon, people don't use their real names. Yeah. So, so we're going to talk about this from the story origin perspective. So, so um, when you set up a review copy, uh, first, when you're giving out review copies, you want to have some way for people to request that review copy from you. Um, so you could do this. So you want to set up a request form like you see here on the left. Um, and uh, you could do this in Google Forms but or something like that. Um, but Story Origin sort of provides a bunch of instructions and makes it makes it a little easier. Um, so one is one thing I recommend is you want to be able to provide a download so that readers can read a sample of the review copy they're going to request before they request it. That way they know whether or not it's something that they actually want to commit to reading because you don't want a reader to be stuck in a situation where they're committed to reading a book uh, that they haven't read any bit of and then feel like they need to leave a review even if they don't like it, right? Um, so providing them that sample gives them a way to say, okay, is this something actually I want to commit to reading? Um, and then part two, you know, getting their reviewer profile link. So uh, here on storage and the way it works is they say what sites they're intending to leave a review on. Uh, and if they click like on Amazon or Goodreads or BookBub, uh, it'll ask them to put in their reviewer profile link. And then Story Origin has this uh, little handy text here that says needs need help finding this. And then it'll provide them instructions with how to find their reviewer profile link um, so that so they can vet, put that. You're basically vetting them before you even give them your ARC. Advanced yeah. Copy. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to make sure that, you know, you're giving your review copy to people that are, are actually likely to review it. Um, and then, and then once they say where they expect to leave a review, they hit submit uh, request. Um, and then that request goes off to you. And then you as the author have the option to either approve or decline that request on a case by case basis. So you really get to bet each individual that wants a review copy. Um, and then also from the reader side, so once you approve them for that review copy, how does it look? So once you've approved them, they have this review uh, completion process page where step one, they can go and they download the full version, not just the sample version. 
Uh, and then step two is they can write their review on story origin. So if you've, if you're providing a pre-publication copy that is like six weeks bef before the publication date and they read your review copy within two days, like they may not remember the book, uh, you know, six weeks later when it's actually published what they wanted to say in their review. So they can go ahead and they can write that review on story origin. And then when they get the reminder email that, Hey, it's publication day. Um, then they can just go and they can copy the text from their review on story origin. They can go and they post that up on Amazon or Goodreads or wherever they said they were expecting to leave a review. So uh, from the author's side, how does this process work? So when someone requests a review copy from you, uh, you're able to see their reviewer profile uh, so here you can see um, what platforms uh, it, you'll see, you'll see what platforms that they said that they expected to leave a review on. And then you can click on this reviewer profile, uh, which will bring up this little box here, which will show you their stats for their, the various pro uh, various platforms where they said they would leave a review. And then you can click on if they put their Amazon reviewer profile link, which they're required to do if they said that they were expecting to leave a review on Amazon um, or Goodreads or the same for BookBub. Um, so you can click on you can click on that to go to their reviewer profile and see everything there. And then you can also see what their completion stats are on Story Origin. So if they've requested, let's say they've been approved for 20 review copies for on Story Origin, but they've only they haven't completed um, any of the steps on story origin for actually leaving that review, then their completion rate would be 0%, right? Or zero out of 20 if they've done it for 20 books. So for that, if you see that, then you're probably going to decline that request for that review copy. So story origin gives you not just the links to their reviewer profiles, um, it actually tells you what percentage of uh, review copies that they've been approved for through Story Origin, have they actually completed the processes for? Uh, so you can have more confidence about who you're actually approving. Uh, and then it will also show you, okay, this person, uh, you know, applied for book one in your series, and here's where they are in that process. So, you know, in this case, this person applied for book one of my Wizards in Space series, and they completed all the steps. Um, and they submitted their review links on July 7th. So I know that this is not just a person that completes reviews on Story Origin, but they've actually completed a review for me through Story Origin before. So I have even greater confidence that if I approve them, they're actually going to go and read the book and, and leave their reviews. Uh, and then how does the tracking side of things work on Story Origin is you, you'll have a um, page listing all of the reviewers uh, so we've just got one person here, but you would see, you know, two or three or four or five, however many people that you've got listed on this page. You see a timeline of when you approved them for the review copy, when you gave them the links to where they could leave their reviews, when they wrote that review, and then when they submitted the links to their reviews. And Story Origin automatically handles sending them those emails. So when you hit, um, when you, when you, if you're doing a pre-publication review copy on Story Origin, on publication day, what you would do is you would go on Story Origin and you hit mark as published. And then that sends out an email to all of the people who you've approved for review copies of that. So you don't need to go and send an email or anything like that. Story Origin just does it for you at the click of a button. Um, and then also Story Origin will automatically follow up with the people who don't complete the review copy process within two weeks. So Story Origin handles all of the follow-up email for you as well question um yeah so this is so i'm sending out my newsletter and it's going to people that are not on story origin yeah and they've agreed to review my book so but they're completing a form that's in story origin they don't have to be a member of story origin to review my book correct they do need to have an account on Story Origin to request that review copy from you because the only way that Story Origin can provide the, provide you with those stats about how many review copy processes that they've completed mm -hmm. through Story Origin is by being able to tie that all to a single individual. Okay. So they do need to have an account on Story Origin. But it, which, they, is that a free account for them? 
Yeah, it's totally free for them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, all the stuff for readers on Story Origin, all of that is free. The only thing that costs any money to anyone is uh, for uh, some of the tools on Story Origin, uh, like the tools that we've been talking about are paid uh, by authors. Um, so, so yeah, no, totally free for the readers to set up accounts on Story Origin, and all it takes from them is to put their name and email address in. Essentially, the same info that you get from them on a on a reader magnet. So, so a lot of your readers, if you've built, if you've gotten them through building, um, building your mailing list through a reader magnet on Story Origin, then those readers will already have accounts on Story Origin. So, most of your readers will already actually probably have accounts. Um, so, so yeah, so, so if you've been building up your mailing list through story origin, like you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of, uh, readers, there's, they're gonna have zero friction to, to, to getting on story origin and stuff. <clears throat> Any other questions there? All right. Um, so so, so, so that's all sort of part of your welcome sequence, right? So you can have in your welcome sequence, you can get people on board, started to onboard into becoming reviewers for you. Uh, with every new subscriber that you get, some, some of them might become a part of your review team. And so slowly but surely, you can start to build up a really regular and, and large uh, review team. That doesn't mean though, you can't, you, you can still, of course, you can send out um, links to review copies for people to request, even in your regular email campaigns. Um, so it doesn't need to be a part of your, your welcome sequence. So, so in your regular email campaigns, you can, you can mention links to those review copies. Um, uh, these are, these are the emails that you would send uh, probably somewhere between once, a, once per week and once per month. I um, would recommend not doing any less frequently than once per month. If you do your, if you only send a newsletter once every three months, uh, and the only other interaction that person has uh, had with you as an author is that they read, you know, a ten thousand word short story from you three months ago, it's highly likely that they'll have forgotten who you are by that point. Um, so I definitely recommend sending emails more regularly than once every three months or something, right? I generally recommend at a minimum sending an email once a month. Um, and, uh, uh, some authors, they'll send them once per week. I think, I think kind of the best range is once every two weeks as a good sort of, um, frequency for sending emails, uh, because it keeps you at the top of mind. And it's not so frequent that it takes a huge chunk of time for you necessarily. Um, and by running emails and newsletters more frequently, you can participate in cross promotions more frequently as well, which can help you expand your audience, right? So if you're only sending emails once per month, you can't, you can't run nearly as many cross promotions. And so you can't extend, you, you can't sort of multiply your audience quite as frequently. Um, the content I would put into these sort of regular email campaigns would be stuff like personal stories. Um, so these might be think, oh, this funny thing happened to me this this week. Um, they might be general interests, like, hey, you know, I'm a big juggling enthusiast, and like, this is what's going on in like uh, the juggling world right now, or something. I don't know. Um, uh, you might you might uh, talk about community happening. So things that are going on in your Facebook group, like, hey, there was just this big discussion in the Facebook group. Uh, not sure if you're a part of it, but there's just this big uh, discussion in the Facebook group about like XYZ topic. Uh, like what do you guys, what, what are your thoughts if you're not a part of the Facebook group? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Um, and that's like a great way to engage people as well. Uh, and then the last thing is you, as I sort of already mentioned, like books from cross promotions. So those newsletter swaps or those group promotions. Uh, for number of cross promotions that you include in any regular newsletters, I would say somewhere between two to four newsletter swaps is pretty average um, and somewhere between one to three group promos. Uh, you don't wanna do like 20 newsletter swaps in a newsletter just because 
you're obviously you're not going to be able to send that many clicks to each one of those books if you're putting 20 newsletter swaps in a newsletter, right? So if you're mentioning 20 books in a in a newsletter, it's just you're you're only going to send traffic to maybe three or four or five of those. Um, and the way that store origin works is all of the performance in cross promotions is all transparent. So if I go and I request a swap with you and you see in my past performance that I had a newsletter that had 20 swaps in it and I only had, you know, two or three clicks on each of the books in that, um, new, in that newsletter, then you're probably going to decline that request from me, right? Because you're going to say, okay, you're just going to put my book in with 20 other books and you're not going to actually send me any traffic. I'm not going to accept this request from you. Uh, so you want to be be sure that you're actually sort of being a good steward of these other authors who you're agreeing to cross promote with and and really helping to helping them to build themselves up. Um, so uh, one strategy that I think is really great, especially if you're just starting to build your mailing list and you don't really have any subscribers yet, is to actually organize your own group promotions. So that uh, essentially uh, that is. Um, to organize your own group promotion, you would create a landing page, which on store origin is simple, very, very simple. Essentially, you just enter some info in a form and store origin automatically creates a page for you. Um, the second thing you'll need is a banner image. Uh, so uh, typically you can just find like a, a free stock photo and then put some text on top of that. Um, one great tool to use is BookBrush, and they have a custom creator. Uh, the, the tool on BookBrush is called Custom Creator. And you can just uh, go there and it make, they make it very simple to like overlay text and, and, and add it on top of graphics and find graphics and stuff like that. But you can also just like go on Microsoft PowerPoint and <laughs> uh, put some text on top. Canva. Or Canva is also another great tool as well. I, I have um, yeah. a question. I did have a question about this. And I wrote yeah. it down. So basically, if you organize the group promo, then it then you get to make the landing page. That is your, I don't want to say job, but I mean, that's what you're doing. If someone else has a group promo, they're making all this, but you can, if if you're in the same genre, let's say it's Cozy Mysteries. So someone wants to organize a Cozy Mystery group promo those same dates, October 31st to 31st. If they want to organize it, they would put a call out. I mean, see, I've never done a group promo. Right. Um, they'd put a call out. I'd say, hey, I want my book in. They accept me. I would have to provide the cover for my book and the link, right? Yes. On story origin, all that stuff is automatic for you, though. So, like, when you, if you're applying to a group promotion on story origin, all that's required of you is you select which book you want in the group promotion. And then you like, will typically you'll include in that message in your application, just like a message to the organizer, like, Hey, yeah, my book is like a cozy mystery. Um, like a lot of times an organizer might have like uh, specific things that they want you to, to include in your, your message, depending on whether or not that group promotion is like, has a certain theme or something. But this um, is an actual book book. This is not your reader magnet, correct? Uh, so on Story Origin, your group, you can run group promotions. They can be for reader magnets. Mm -hmm. They can be for review copies. They can be for universal book links, in which case the they'll, so we haven't talked about universal book links, but that's essentially landing page on Story Origin, which shows all the retailers where your book is available for purchase. So um, like a reader would come to that landing page, then they would click, click Amazon and it would take them directly to that Amazon page for that book. Um, and it, those universal book links also come with like other nice features where like it automatically localizes the link. So if they're in the UK, it takes them amazon.co.uk, or if they're in Australia, it takes them to amazon.com.au, um, all, all that stuff. So, so yeah, so those group promotions can be for, yeah, either building your mailing list with your reader magnets, getting more reviews with your review copies, um, increasing your sales uh, by pointing them to your universal book links um, or by getting more um, sales on your audiobooks with universal audiobook links or by getting more reviews on your 
uh, audiobooks by um, distributing audiobook promo codes through Story Origin. So um, the organizer is the one yeah. that decides what they want to do then, I guess. The organizer decides what type of promotion it is. So okay. if it's a list builder or if it's increase your sales or if it's get more reviews. And then you, when you're applying to it, if it's a get more sales, then you would apply with a universal book link. If it's a get get more people on your mailing list, then you apply with your reader magnet. Um, um, yeah. One question did come in about the book reviews. Mm -hmm. um, Terry says, if the goal is to get your book reviewed, why wouldn't you just grant all requests to review it? Wouldn't being liberal about that just increase the probability that you will end up with more reviews, at least more than if you were selective about who you will let review it? Yes, it will increase the probability that you're going to get more people to review it, but not all authors take that same approach. Um, a lot of authors are not willing to give people their book for free if they look at a person and it says they've been approved for 20 review copies and they've finished the review copy process for zero of those, right? Um, so, so a lot of authors would just decline that request. Every author has their own risk tolerance level. Story Origin doesn't make any um, assumption about your risk tolerance level for you. So you are in the driver's seat about who you want to approve and decline for those review copy requests. Story Origin is basically the only real review platform where you get that sort of um, where you get that sort of management on a case by case basis for um, you know anything that's not an outrageous price. So um, yeah, I mean you, you you can certainly you can approve everyone under the sun, or you might find cases where. You know, like I was mentioning before, you have a reviewer who has only reviewed cozy romances and your book is a steamy romance and you're like, okay, this person might not be getting what they expect. And so I don't want them to feel like they need to leave a review um, for a book that they're not going to enjoy. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's totally, totally up to you and what your own risk tolerance level is. Story Origin leaves, leaves you in the driver's seat about that. All right. Um, and then for, uh, so, so yeah, so back to sort of organizing group promotions. Um, so yeah, you create the banner image, you would upload that to story origin and then, um, yeah, it can be for any one of those goals that we were talking about earlier, whether it's, you know, getting more, uh, subscribers or increasing your sales or getting more reviews. Um, uh, and then talking about how to actually recruit participants for that uh, group promotion. So on the left side, you'll see um, Story Origin has a listing of what the upcoming group promotions are so that you as an author, you can go on Story Origin and you can see all the upcoming group promotions and you can just apply to the ones that you like there. Um, but if you are running a group promotion, uh, so you'll get some authors that are just going to apply through Story Origin, they're going to find it through Story Origin. But one of the other great things to do is go ahead and post the link for authors to apply across a bunch of, there are tons of different Facebook groups um, where you can uh, look for other authors that are trying to run cross promotions as well. And you can post the link there where other, for other authors to apply. Um, and that way you're sort of, you, you, you're doing your best job to make the group promotion generally as big as possible. Um, it, it depends like, like here we're mostly we're, we've been talking about building mailing lists and stuff. So, um, typically you're going to want your group promotion to be as big as possible with uh, a list builder, just the more authors that are in that, um, the more subscribers that everyone is going to get in it. So, so you want to make sure that you're getting other authors on board. Uh, so, so yeah, the bigger and more authors, the better generally with a group, uh, group giveaway where you're building your mailing list. Uh, and so organizing that group promotion is sort of your contribution to the group, right? So if you've got zero mailing list subscribers, your contribution to the group is sort of creating that banner image and then finding other authors that want to be a part of it. Um, so even if your mailing list is still really small, this is a great way to get started. 
Uh, so yeah, um, I, I want to sort of turn this over to you guys now. Uh, any sort of questions on anything else that we went over or, or if there's any place that you guys want to sort of dig, dig deeper into on store origin with like uh, newsletter swaps or group promotions or review copies. I know one thing when we were chatting from the tech check, <clears throat> you, um, I was asking you a question and you immediately took me to story origin and showed me, Oh, I made a video on that. And it, it only took me 31 seconds. <laughs> you had the countdown clock and everything. Yeah. So for, I mean, I've used story origin for a while. There's obviously a ton of stuff that I have not even tried, which I feel really bad about, but <laughs> um, so someone's just starting out and they're like, Oh my gosh, this is like the most, overwhelming thing i've ever seen yes in my life. right um maybe you can take us through creating a landing page or, yeah you know i mean oh look it's up right now so <laughs> yeah let's do that so so here i am on story origin uh, uh this is what hold on one second so yep. to get started with story origin mm -hmm. you go to story origin dot org story origin app dot com okay so it's up yep. there yeah, so storyoriginapp.com. There you You'll go. You'll see oh. um, there's a place for readers here. They can click on on um, these buttons, and that'll take them to. So these are all uh, review copies that are available. There's like a public directory. If you've got a review copy on Story Origin, you can submit it to the public directory. Um, you don't have to put it there if you want to keep your like review copy team like small and sort of private. You don't have to list it on the public directory or anything like that but that's placed for for readers and then the rest of the landing page there is really more dedicated to authors talking about the things that we talked about so review copies universal book links reader magnets um uh you know what what your goals are um and then once you're on story origin you'll you'll have an account and then you can click here and go to your author dashboard that'll take you here um and then, you know, these are sort of the recommended things that you would do to finish setting up your account. Um, so, you know, create a reader magnet, um, uh, join a group promotion or apply for a newsletter swap. So uh, let's go ahead, since we've been talking about reader magnets, I'll go ahead and hit create reader magnet landing page. All we, all we have to do here is essentially put in the put in the book title, put in, uh, click our author profile, right? So select the author profile we've got on our account, uh, headline, subheader, tags, uh, upload, you know, our book cover in the book files, uh, and then hit the create button. And then as soon as we hit the create button, that will create a landing page for us like this one here. Um, so this would be the header. This is the subheader, uh, says what, what file types are available uh your book is available in here's like a little blurb and then when someone clicks on get the story if they're already signed into an account they'll just automatically populate their contact info they would say yes i want to sign up to your mailing list and then they hit, would hit send download link um so so and then if you want to go ahead and you want to edit any of that information later you can just go ahead and and edit it it's it's the same form that you used when you were creating that reader magnet landing page. Um, and then if we wanted to go and see upcoming group promotions that we might want to join. Uh, so again, just so I'm not making sure I'm not doing anything too fast here. So we're back on our author dashboard. Uh, I would hit browse group promos. Uh, we can see the type that is upcoming. And then um, here are giveaways. So giveaways, those are the ones that we submit our reader magnet to um, for building our mailing list. Uh, and then I can see what books I already have in the group promo. I just hit apply. And then I would select which of my uh, reader magnets I want to submit. So then I would type in my message. And then I would select what date I'm going to send out my newsletter um as a part of this um and then i would just hit apply so that's how you would apply to a group promotion and you don't have to like remember all this stuff and and everything if you go to this tutorials tab at the top of story origin here 
you'll find uh, tutorials for, you know, creating, creating your EPUB and Mobi files. Here's how you create a reader magnet. Here's how you download your signups from Story Origin and upload them to your email service provider. Or if Story Origin has an integration with your email service provider, whether that's MailChimp, MailerLite, Story Origin has integrations with nine different email service providers, so I'm not going to list them all. Um, but uh, Story Origin can automatically integrate with those. And so when someone signs up to get that reader magnet via Story Origin, their contact info will just automatically be sent to MailChimp or MailerLite or what have you. Um, and then, yeah, there's tutorials on, you know, applying to group promotions or how do you do newsletter swap mentions, um, all that stuff. So, uh, and then, and then the other thing is, let's say that you even, let's say that you even forget, you know, that there's a tutorials tab there for you. Um, if you go to your author dashboard and you look at any of these. Uh, you'll see there's a quick description of what that tab is all about. Uh, and then it also links to the tutorial for how to do that thing. And then also you can click on this uh, show or hide features and use cases uh, just to get an idea of like what you're, what you're using this for. So, uh, you know, on reader magnets, you might, you might go here. Um, and if you want to, if you, if you forget any of the stuff that we've talked about here as well, um, so back on this tutorials tab, there are, there's not only video tutorials, but also text guides. So this zero to 1000 uh, mailing list subscribers uh, article is, this is sort of what we covered today. Um, but just in case you forget any of it, this is sort of, this is all the stuff that we sort of covered today, all for you just uh, in text. So for those of you who like to read which um, I would imagine would be everyone. So. <laughs> Jeanette asks, a mention was made about removing freebie seekers from our email yes. list. How do we do this? Yeah, so in that welcome sequence, so yeah, this is this is something I sort of forgot to mention. So in that welcome sequence, you've got, you know, two or three or four emails that you have set up where they're going to be getting these over the course of, you know, two or three or four or five days. Uh, and if someone doesn't, open any of those emails in your welcome sequence, then you can just remove them from your mailing list, right? Um, uh, that's sort of that welcome sequence by, by having that set up, you can see at who's actually opening and clicking on your emails. And so you can recognize who are going to be those, who, who are the people that just signed up just to get the download and aren't going to actually opening any of those emails, that welcome sequence will help you weed those people out. So you can, you can, different email service providers do it different ways, but basically the ge way it generally works is you can create like a segment of people who are not opening your, your, um, who are not opening your emails. And then you can just auto un you can just unsubscribe them from your side. You can just automatically unsubscribe those people from your mailing list. I know there was a lot of stuff, but this is such an amazing program. I mean, it's got so much stuff. I mean, you could probably spend days and days and days. <laughs> um, yes, for sure. Yes, this is, yeah. You also have a Facebook group, which I have found amazing. Can you um, mention the Facebook group? Yeah, so there is there is a Facebook group. Um, if you go to let's see, Facebook um groups story origin yeah so you can you can go to story uh you can go to uh the facebook group and i'll make like occasional announcements about like what new features are available um you can ask questions uh and a lot of times you'll just like see me in the responses and stuff like that um so so yeah no this is a this is definitely a great place for people to go um to learn more about story origin and to uh, get advice from other authors that have been on it for a while. There are a lot of really helpful authors who are saying like, oh, here's been my experience because I can tell you all this stuff. Uh, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, Evan is biased. He's incentivized to, uh, you know, <laughs> help, help uh, explain everything. But uh, you can, you can find uh, a lot of other authors sharing their stories there. And one thing that you can find really helpful is if you go to topics in this group, uh, if you hit this hashtag case studies topic, um, there, what I've done is a lot of authors have written about 
how they how they did certain things, like how they got a bunch of reviewers or how they built their mailing list or how they um, ran like a Kindle free period. Um, so if you hit that hash, hashtag case study, uh, I've marked some of the posts there where authors have done like a deep dive onto various things. Um, so, yeah. And um, let's talk about pricing. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, that that does matter. <laughs> um, so so yeah. So if you if you go to the pricing tab on Story Origin, you'll see um, there's a basic plan which is totally free. Um, you can use basically essentially the universal book links, um, and then you can use um, the direct downloads feature as well. Um, so that's the unlimited file delivery and you can integrate your email service provider. This plan is not really, if you've already got your own audience and you've, you're incredibly established already, then you might just want to be on the free plan. Um, but if you want to really grow your audience, uh, I would definitely recommend the standard plan, which comes with the features that we were talking about. Um, so the reader magnets, the review copies, the group prom promos, newsletter swaps, uh, all that stuff. Um, so that is $10 a month or $100 per year. Um, I, would, I would recommend the yearly option just because you're getting, you're saving 17% or you're getting two months free otherwise. Um, but yeah. Those are those are sort of the options available. Um, that that's that's at least what I would recommend as well. And you can you can kind of see why I recommend that here. Um, yeah. And I did see something down there on pen names. So if someone has multiple pen names, yeah. So if you have multiple pen pen names, uh, just so so Story Origin is built as one pen name per account. Um. So uh, if you need to, if you need to upgrade multiple accounts because you are writing under multiple pen names, uh, you just shoot me an email, provide, provide me with some verification that you personally actually write under those multiple pen names. Uh, like a lot of authors will just send me like a screenshot of their Amazon dashboard showing that the books for both pen names are listed under their Amazon dashboard. Um, and then I'll provide you with a 50% uh, discount on uh, any any additional accounts that you have. So if you write under one pen name in, uh, so you and you have to to get that discount, you'd have to upgrade your accounts on the yearly plan. So if you write under one pen name, it'd be $100 per year. Two pen names would be $150 per year. Three pen names would be $200 a year. Um, and this pricing is actually like, very affordable compared to what other other tools that you can use. So, um, yeah, I mean, one of the things about Story Origin is like, basically, you would have to cobble together like several other websites to do all of the things that Story Origin does. And then, even if you look at one specific feature of Story Origin, is say what is the price of doing that with another platform, like usually store origin is still even more affordable if you're just looking at one particular feature. Um, but yeah, so I think there was another question. Yeah, Jeanette asked if you have a real name and one pen name, would that be equal to two pen names? Yes. So, uh, so, so you sign up to store origin uh, under your, under your pen name. So, uh, I mean, any name that you write books under is considered a pen name. Yeah. So you would, you could sign up either under your real name or pen name, but then the second account would be discounted. Right, that's right. And, and you could oh, oh, go ahead. You 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 don't have to upgrade both your accounts, right? So I mean, there are some authors that are, you know, they want to provide a free download for their uh, a, another pen name that they have an account under, but they just leave it on the free version because it's something that they've kind of put on the back burner and they're not necessarily like trying to build an audience or really build up that pen name yet. Um, so they might just stay, keep that one on a free account and just upgrade one account. So you can do it, it different ways. 
What about if you write as a team and have two names? So in other words, this is Terry and Carol, but you know, John and Mary Smith, husband and wife or partners or whatever, mm -hmm. write as a team. Yep. So, yeah, so I mean, I mean, basically you would just sign up to Story Origin under under that combined name. So like Bill Bellew, who, you know, did the presentation on in January, he he has an account, he has a account under Bill and Mia because he and his daughter write together. Because they probably have just one author page too. That's right. Yeah. I know you're pretty accessible, but do you have an email that you're willing to share with people? Oh, sure. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you can, if you, if you're on the story origin homepage and you literally just scroll to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see my email address right there. Or if you click this contact button, you will see my email address right there as well. Um, so anyone is, is certainly welcome to reach out to me. You do want to note that it is a little bit of a funky um, domain name on the end there. It's at storyorge.in. I, that is a, uh, that is a, um, from a, from a time before I acquired the storyoriginapp.com domain when I was being a little bit too cute with the domain address. And then I realized I'm probably going to have to go on a lot of podcasts and explain <laughs> where people can go to Story Origin and explaining that it's storyorige.in. Okay. Now how you spell this is S D O. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's when I, I moved to story origin app.com, but yeah, so, so, uh, my, my domain on my email address is still this, uh, kind of funky one though. Easy to remember, right? Yeah. Um, the hard part for me was always, do I start with story origin first or do I start with mailer light first? So what about people that are on neither one? What would you, cause they're kind of almost I think we're, just, I don't know how you would say the word. You kind of do both things, but you have to have your mailing list, your mailing, you have to have like mailer light set up before you can put that information in story origin. So what would you say? Um, I would go ahead and create your account on your email service provider. Um, and you can create your account on story origin right after. I mean, you don't, there's no, I mean, you would generally want both of them set up um, a lot of uh, so 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 before even sort of talking about any of this stuff, like the universal book links feature review copies feature direct downloads audio review codes universal audiobook links, all that stuff, none of that stuff requires that you have an email service provider set up right like the reader magnets and building your mailing list and it has been what we're we're talking about a, a lot today and those cross promotions and stuff. Um, generally you would want, those are generally things that you're cross promoting via your newsletter, but all those tools, uh, the tools that I just mentioned, you can use them without having an email service at all. You might just like link to your universal book links from your website or something, because you want the feature that <clears throat> store origin automatically localizes those domains to the correct, like Amazon storefront for you. Right. Um, or you just want to be able to like collect interest and review copies by pe people clicking on that link from your website or whatever. So you can set up your store origin account without having an email service provider at all. Um, but if you want to like build a mailing list and, and participate in cross promotions and stuff, which is where a lot of the value comes from, um, then yeah, you would want to set up an, an account on like Merrillite or MailChimp, um, or, or one of the other ones uh, as well. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter what order you do that in. You also have a work, work in progress goal, goal tracker, which um, I find a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, Little perks. Yeah, Story Origin comes. So when I said, I said earlier, Story Origin helps you build your mailing list, find reviewers, increase your sales, and stay on top of deadlines. Um, those deadlines are both um, having like a campaign planner for knowing what dates that you're sending out your newsletters and staying on top of what you've got there. But Story Origin also has this nifty uh, goal trackers feature as well, where you can um, keep track of like what your what your daily word counts are. And then uh, it'll keep a graph of what you've got planned in terms of what your goal is. And then uh, uh, 
how, how close you are to progress on that goal. Um, I've heard a lot of authors who have said like, oh, I just saw this thing over on Story Origin. I didn't know what it was, but I clicked on it and tried it out just because it's there for me to try. <laughs> um, and they're like, oh, this actually really changed how I write. Like I have substantially more motivation to hit my goals every single day just because I started using this feature on Story Origin. It took me, you know, months to finish my first book, but it took me weeks to finish my second book just because like I was so rigorously keeping track of how much I was doing each day. It just made me that much more ambitious. Um, so yeah, there, it's it's kind of funny I because I built this feature and people are like, Evan, what are you doing? Like Story Origins, this marketing tool. Why are you building this goal trackers feature in? Uh, and then and then people try and they're like, actually, this is fantastic. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, the, I like find it super bonus. helpful. So, kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've probably touched 15 to 20 percent of everything this can do. And, you know, it's delivered by reader magnets perfectly. I haven't had any problems or anything, but I know you've added so much too over the years. And yeah. you're still going to probably be adding stuff too. Something tells me. Oh yeah, for sure. No, there's a <laughs> story origin is uh, certainly still, still working, uh, work in process. So I'm, I'm always adding new features, upgrading existing ones, um, <laughs> getting feedback from authors and always trying to make everything a little bit better. And you do, you listen to us. You always listen and ask questions and get feedback, you know, and I appreciate that. Yeah, Bill says that the, the word tracker is an author magnet. That's very good. <laughs> it is It is an author magnet. Yeah, I mean, I, it's part of, you know, one thing I, I like to sort of think about what features I'm going to build um, next in, in, in different ways. And one, one of those things is I want Story Origin to sort of feel like your author home, something that you want to come to and and sort of play with a little bit every single day and having that goal tracker there is, is something that you you want to use sort of every day and so story origin can can help you out with that and it's a lot less clunky than um trying to manage a bunch of different spreadsheets <laughs> so any other questions anybody i mean this is amazing just seriously i'm blown away just you know <laughs> And I'm a subscriber. Hold on, let me see. Donna, do you see any questions that I've missed? Uh, no, no questions that you've missed. Do you have any questions? Because I know you've got a few books out. No, he like everybody who's asked questions, those are things that I wanted to know. And he pretty much uh, covered everything I can think of. Okay. Excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> and Donna, she writes um, more of a what would you say erotic romance yeah I was listening to him talk about the steamy romance I was like that's me <laughs> so you do have a place for everybody I mean it's not just all cozies and you know space operas right <laughs> right yeah so so those group promotions or those newsletter swaps I'm not sure if you saw it when we were looking at them earlier but um you, you have various tags there. So Story Origin works on a tag-based system rather than like a genre-based system. So um, so you can combine those tags to find what you're looking for. So like there's a romance tag, but then you can combine it with the clean tag to find clean romance group promos or newsletter swaps, right? Or you can find, um, you know, you there's like a cozy tag and a mystery tag. So you make cozy mystery or uh, to find like cozy mysteries. Um, or you can combine like the space one and the sci-fi one to find like space sci-fi. Um, so yeah, so story origin, story origin works on a tag system. So you can find exactly, uh, other kinds of authors that you want to, want to run those cross promotions with. Uh, Sandy asks, is there a devotional tag? There is not a devotional tag. Um, there are other religious related tags though. Um, and I do add tags if people reach out to me about them, if they're finding that the set of tags 
that are available aren't sort of getting them to what they want. Um, because I don't want to blow the system up with having like a million different tags because then you just actually scatter people so much that you don't actually can't find each other. <laughs> um, so I try to limit the set of tags, um, but I'll add tags here and there if, if people are finding like, oh, like this is not, you know, I'm not able to find people uh, even in this, this particular thing. So, yeah. So yeah, if you, if you, if you try and find cross promotional, uh, cross promotions and the tags, uh, don't match, uh, you can't find what you're looking for with the existing tags. Just shoot me an email. So we got about five minutes left. If anybody has any other questions, <clears throat> I mean, this is an awesome opportunity to ask, ask the guy that developed the app, you know, there's just a few of us on here. So your, your question will be answered. <laughs> No, it won't. I refuse. <laughs> no more questions. No. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. What made you start Story Origin? Let's, have, let's ask you that. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, Story Origin, back when I was starting it, I, I was, uh, so, so I used to write short stories back in high school. And then uh, in college, I got interested in entrepreneurship. And then I went and I worked for a few years. And I was sort of at, at a place where I was like, okay, I think now's the time I want to actually pursue building my own business. So I left my previous role. And I want to combine, combine those uh, interests in writing and entrepreneurship. So I went and I talked to some authors and I sort of learned about the author landscape. And I, I was telling them, okay, like what, what tools are you using? And I was like, okay, so I use this one service to build my mailing list. I use this other service to get more reviews. I use this other service, like, or I use like some combination of like Facebook groups and Google forms and email to find newsletter swaps. Um, and then like, I keep track of all my um, goals in uh, like a spreadsheet and all this different stuff. Um, and so, so I was like, okay, this sounds like a major headache. Um, I'm going to build one system that will sort of unify all this stuff. So instead of having to deal with like eight different logins and three different spreadsheets, you can have all of it in sort of one place. Um, and uh, if, if I had told you at the time that that's what I was going to do, you probably would have said, Evan, I think you're smoking something. Um, and, and, uh, uh, but here we are only four years later and it's, uh, and uh, you can do, you can do all those things on, on story origin now. So. Question. Are you start in out with all that stuff though. Are you in California? I know the answer to that, but no, I'm in Texas. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then occasionally you'll see I say howdy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm not sure about the best way best way to set up a newsletter to include promoting others' books. Do I write about their books or just include the book cover? Um, this is totally up to you and your style. Um, how you want to include other people's books in your, your, um, your newsletter. Typically what I, th the way that I think of, um, <clears throat> typically the way that I think of, uh, cross promotions is like, as the, as the, um, recommended section on Amazon, um, sorry, one, give me two seconds here. I've got to go open the door for my wife. One second. <laughs> one thing I'll mention while Evan's gone, uh, a lot of us subscribe to different newsletters. And if you subscribe to different newsletters, I've gotten newsletters before where at the, at the bottom of the, they'll have all their news and, you know, the picture of them and the kid or them and doing something. And then at the bottom of the newsletter, it'll say other books you might enjoy and or other authors work you might enjoy and so then there's just links you know there's a picture of a book and a link i was just saying that i've got newsletters where at the bottom there'll be something that says other books you might enjoy or other authors you might want to check out and then they just have pictures of the books you know it doesn't like be a big review of everything yep that's what i would say Just feeling, just feeling dead airspace there. So, you know. Yeah, no, I think, I think, I think exactly what you just explained uh, covers it actually. 
it's sort of like the um also the also bought section on store uh, on amazon where it's just like books other books uh that you might like are and then you sort of include your cross promotions there and the other thing is if you've read a book i mean if i've read somebody else's book that i think is like fantastic i've seen that before in a newsletter where it's like oh my gosh i just finished reading this book written by you know a good friend then you can say why you liked it you know you 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 know that's more of a personal thing but um shrey says or asks should you have a magnet before starting a list <clears throat> um i mean you can start a mailing list at any time you don't you don't need to have anything um so yeah no i mean you can start start your list first and just you know get friends and family to sign up or something uh, and then work on the reader magnet later. Um, yeah, there's no problem with that. I think being creative with reader magnets, I've seen like cozy mystery writers have a recipe book or I've seen mm -hmm. crime fiction writers have a dossier of characters, but it's it's like, you know, it's kind of like rap sheets on all their different characters or something. There's just a lot of fun things that you can do. In fact, if you're on the Story Origin Facebook group, you could almost ask, what do you guys suggest for reader magnet? And I bet you get a whole lot of <laughs> suggestions. Uh, what's the best way to boost Facebook posts? Um, uh, I'm, I don't have any uh, great advice on, on boosting Facebook posts. I mean, I think, you know, Facebook, they uh, will give you more, uh, you'll get more engagement and you'll get more people to see your posts with the more engagement that you have on each post. Um, and so if you uh, ask questions in your Facebook posts, which encourages people to respond, then you get more engagement, which then makes Facebook want to put that up in more people's timelines because it's actually getting people to, to uh, sort of engage. I've heard putting links in the comments instead of in the actual post helps too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I could see that happening uh, as well. All right, everybody. Um, Evan, thank you so much. Yep. It's been amazing. Thank Thanks for, for having me on. Thank you for spending our morning and part of your afternoon. Yes. <laughs> with us. Um, if people have questions, you know how to email them, just go to the site. I suggest you sign up for the free account and just check it out and see what you think because you never know. You might realize that like me, three years later, there's a whole lot of stuff in there that you haven't ever looked at yet. <laughs> Very good. All right. All right, thanks Evan. You thanks take again. Care. All right, see you all.